Hello, today is January 1st and this is my final Vlogmas video. Um, as you have noticed, I did not upload anything after Vlogmas Day 21 and I was planning on it, but my plans changed because I decided that I needed a different kind of rest. Today I'm going to talk to you about seven types of rest that you need. Um, you may not be aware that there's more than just physical rest. We all know that sometimes we need to just sleep and not set the alarm. We need to take naps and just fill up our sleep bank. That's a type of physical rest that we can get. But sometimes when you sleep and you wake up and you're still tired, it's not just physical rest that you're actually needing. There may be some other type of rest. So I'm gonna go through the different types of rest today and talk to you about what I did over my Christmas break, my holiday break, um, to fill up myself and be ready for a new year of teaching and um, being the best me that I can be. All right, so let's start off with number one, physical rest. That is the easiest for everyone to understand because we're accustomed to, you know, when you're tired, you need to go to sleep. It may or may not always be true. But over the holiday break, I was able to get a lot of extra rest. I slept in without an alarm. In fact, the first few days that I was on break, I really didn't do much other than sleep. Uh, I might have gotten up in the evening and moved around the house and did some things at my own pace, but I was really just focused on getting physical rest. Of course, as you know, I was recovering from an illness um, that, hap that started two weeks before the break, so it was even more important for me to get physical rest. I've noticed that sometimes when I slow down like that, um, I can actually avoid getting sick. Um, or I can minimize how long I'll be sick. But this time I had just pushed myself too hard for too long. So I really just needed to get as much rest as possible. So you, if you would have been a fly on the wall in my house, you would have seen me on the couch a lot, in my room, in bed, um, sleeping until like maybe 8 a.m. But then I would stay in my bed and not get up until maybe 10. And I would just lounge around and read and watch YouTube videos and things like that. That's what I needed to do um, to rest my body. All right, second thing, mental rest. Mental rest can be achieved in a lot of ways. Um, well, as you know, being a teacher, you're constantly mentally um, challenged. You're always being faced with lots of decisions, many different decisions very quickly all day long. And then you also have demands that, you know, the administrators place on you, things that need to be done for the students, things that need to be done in keeping in contact with the families. So mental rest in my case was just taking complete time away from work. I did not check my email over break until the very end, not until I was ready to start coming in and cleaning out my room. I did not um, spend time lesson planning. I did not even think about what I was gonna do next. I just completely shut that part of my mind down and focused on just being me, that was mental rest for me. Um, also, my choice not to do any Vlogmas videos at the very end and just be okay with that was a form of mental rest for me. Um, being on your devices constantly is mentally draining and so sometimes I would just put my phone down, put my devices away and not use them at all for a whole day um, while I was on break. There was actually a time when we went um, to Maryland um, to drop off my parents' Christmas gift. We bought them a Black Forest cuckoo clock, which they wanted for many, many years. And we decided we were gonna hand deliver it since it was a, a valuable antique. Um, so we drove out there and I forgot my phone charger. So my phone died not long into the trip and I just went without one for a day and a half and it was great. <laughs> I should have done it a long time before that. So then after that I realized, hey, I probably should do a little bit more of this over break because when you come back to school and you're in that environment where, you know, there's so much technology involved in our jobs, especially since the pandemic, uh, it's good to just take a, a break from it when you can. So I had that opportunity and I took it. The third type of rest is called sensory rest. This can be achieved by um, going out in nature and maybe taking a walk. I did some walks over break. 
I spent time with my dog, um, just sitting there petting him and not thinking about anything in particular. Um, it's very soothing, you know, when you have a, a pet that is your, your companion and you can just sit there and be with them and you don't have to say anything or do anything. It's a form of sensory rest. Um, but Nate, anything in nature is a form of sensory rest. I got a massage, which, you know, calms your senses when you get a massage and just sitting out in the breeze. It's been so nice here, um, unseasonably warm in North Carolina and Eastern North Carolina. And so I've been enjoying just sitting outside and uh, breathing in the fresh air and just being me. The uh, fourth type of rest is creative rest. And depending on what you do for a living, that can look a little bit different for different people. So you might want to engage in something creative um, for creative rest. For example, you know, I showed you how I learned some new and beautiful techniques for wrapping packages. That was filling and healing for me. Um, and it gave me a sense of creative rest. I also worked on my table centerpiece for Christmas. So doing something with your hands sometimes um, where you have to create can be very restful. I also um, put together a floral centerpiece for my sister with her wedding flowers from last year, the remaining ones, um, so she has something to keep in her house. And I sent that home with my other sister to take to her. So those were all ways that I engaged in creative things um, to rest over break. However, my daughter, she is a photographer and she has to take some time off during the holiday break and not edit any of her photos. She doesn't do any photo shoots. She doesn't edit anything. She just spends time with the family and does things that have nothing to do with her everyday creative job. Um, that's another type of creative rest. It just really depends on what makes you feel like you've rested and you kind of have a sense of do you need to stop doing creative things or do you need to do something creative? Um, so just listen to yourself and do what feels right for you at the time. The fifth type of rest is emotional rest. And in my case, um, I was noticing that I needed emotional rest because I just felt very drained um, and a low motivation to do anything. My classroom was a complete disaster and I don't normally let it get that bad. There's always things going on in here um, because I do so many experiments and hands-on things that it tends to get a little bit messy from time to time and sometimes a lot messy, but I honestly just had no motivation to do anything um, in my classroom. I was just surviving day to day. And that's how you can tell that you're not only physically tired, but maybe emotionally tired. The things that you normally would enjoy doing, which I enjoy working in my classroom and moving around and, you know, organizing things in here. Um, I enjoy planning and different things like that. I just wasn't into any of it. And I knew that I needed a break emotionally. So I didn't speak to my students. I, you know, avoided situations that would bring up thoughts about work and things that I needed to do. And uh, when I came back, I just avoided all of that. Um, I really didn't see very many families that I knew over the break. So it was pretty easy for me to take an emotional break. Also, I avoided conflict with my husband when possible, um, but only temporarily. So um, I wanted to clarify something I said in a previous video. Um, I mentioned how sometimes we disagree on um, giving because I'm a very generous person and he's a very frugal person and he, he was raised that way. And I was raised kind of like with a little bit of both because my dad is the generous um, person and my mom can be but she's also very smart with money and so um, I have kind of like a, a balanced um, upbringing on that however I tend towards the generous side um, I just really love giving presents it's a way that I show love and I really enjoy being able to have enough that I can give something away to others so Christmas is a big time for us when we have these discussions. And one of them is that I'm always wanting to do um, over and above for my students or for coworkers. And so I mentioned that we um, did, I didn't talk to my husband about how much I was spending for this, the store in my classroom. 
And um, I want to say, you know, that's not a long term solution and obviously wouldn't be a great thing to do on a regular basis in a relationship. However, um, just for short term, when you know that you are emotionally drained, um, can be a good solution as long as you come back to it and have a discussion later, which we did. We've had a discussion about the budget since then and about how much we were spending on everything and worked through it and planned what we're going to do in January so that we're ready for buying our land coming up um, later this winter. So I feel like, you know, I just wanted to say, like, if you avoid conflict um, as a way to get emotional rest, make sure if that's an important relationship in your life, like in my case, you know, my marriage, that you find a way to come back to that at a time when you're more rested. It's not that you don't want to ever engage in conflict. Conflict can be productive, but it's not going to be productive when you're exhausted. Um, and it's more likely that you're going to get into an argument that is, isn't going to go anywhere. Um, so it was better that we just waited and had that conversation at a later time. Um, so that was, those are some ways that I got emotional rest. I also engaged in some fun things over the holidays, um, holiday activities with friends and with family. Um, so all of those things built me up. Talking to um, a family member or someone trusted, a trusted friend about problems that you're having can also give you a sense of emotional rest. And of course, going to see a therapist if you need to is also a great way to get emotional rest. Um, one thing that I love to do is journal. I'll journal my thoughts and then I'll go back and I'll look at it later. And usually I can see patterns and I can um, make good decisions that can help me solve problems. Once I get it out and I can look at it and I've had some time away from it and it's just there for me to observe um, without so much emotion tied to it, then I usually come up with a solution for something that's been bothering me and draining me emotionally. All right, um, number six is social rest. So social rest is sort of like creative rest. Sometimes you need to socialize and sometimes you need to stop socializing. So for me, um, not socializing with the people that I do my everyday job with, um, the, the families that I serve, choosing to just kind of like uh, make a little cocoon out of my family during this time was really good for me getting social rest. I love the people that I work with and that I serve, but I just needed some time away from that. And um, sometimes when you are living in the community that you work in, especially as a teacher, it's easy for you to get sucked into things that have to do with work if you end up socializing too much with the people that you also are te um, serving as a teacher. So it kind of worked out. I didn't try, have to try too hard, honestly, because we were doing so many things around our house and we had family in town. And so, you know, it wasn't that difficult for me to just sort of stay away from those circles. Um, so it's not like I was really avoiding anything. It's just how it happened to work out, but it was really a positive thing for me to just get some time away and um, be with my people. I spent time with my parents. I got to see my nephews who were in town for a short visit when we went out to Maryland. Didn't think I was gonna travel, but I ended up feeling up to it after getting some rest. Um, we went out there for a short time and then we visited also with my daughter and um, my son-in-law and my uh, grandson who came to visit. We went out to their house, brought things to them, brought my sister back from Maryland for a short visit. So I got plenty of social rest in the form of socializing, but also choosing who I was socializing with so that I would also get some time away from the people that I see in my day to day. Also, I want to point out that we kept our New Year's Eve really simple this year. It was just Joe and I and um, after we dropped my sister off to spend New Year's Eve with my daughter in Virginia, we just went and saw some Christmas lights. Uh, there was a really cool show close to King's Dominion, which is in um, Doswell, Virginia. And we did that ride through um, Christmas light tour. And then we went out for pancakes and we did end up seeing a friend in there um, in the restaurant, which was surprising uh, because of where we were. <laughs> But overall, it was a very simple evening. We came home, we watched the ball drop, and 
you know, we said Happy New Year and we went to bed and that was it. So that was nice that after such a hustle and bustle Christmas with everyone in the house and all the fun that we had, it was nice to just uh, have a very simple New Year's Eve. Lastly, um, seventh type of rest that I want to talk to you about today is spiritual rest. And spiritual rest um, is different for different people. If you don't pr uh, practice a particular religion, then it might just be meditation for you. Um, but just recentering yourself. The way that I personally recenter myself is reading my Bible, listening to worship music, spending some time by myself, um, doing those things, praying about things that are going on in my life. I did some praying about what my one word should be for the new year because I, as I told you last year, I don't do New Year's resolutions. I do a one word. And when I pick my word, then I try to make decisions all year long that would reflect an awareness of what that word means to me. So I'll talk to you more about my one word for this year. I'll announce that in an upcoming video and tell you what I'm planning on doing with that. Um, but I also listened to, listened to some sermons online when I was getting ready for Christmas. I just put on a Stephen Furtick podcast and listened to that. And um, also we made a point of going to Christmas Eve service with our family during that really busy time right before Christmas. Uh, it was nice to slow down and just think about the true meaning of Christmas and, you know, be with our family doing that together. That gave me spiritual rest. So I hope that you've enjoyed these seven um, types of rest that you need. And of course, this is not an exhaustive list. There may be some others that you can think of that I haven't talked about. Um, the information that I got, it came from Anjali Singh, and that was from July of 2021. And it's called Seven Types of Rest That You and Your Body Needs Right Now. And I'm going to link that below in the description box so you can take a look at it. But I'll also link a few others. Um, some people say there's nine types of rest. Some say there's five. There's a lot of different types. If you have another type that I didn't talk about today and some suggestions, feel free to put that in the comments. And I would love to hear um, what your ideas are on that this topic. That's it for today's video. And as I said, this is my final Vlogmas. So the next video that I put out for you will be all about my New Year's plans, how I am taking good care of myself in 2022, and what my one word will be and how that will impact the things that I do in my everyday activities. Thanks for listening, everyone. I so appreciate all of your support. We are up to over 300 subscribers, and I can't believe how quickly that happened. So thanks for being part of this channel. As always, don't forget to work hard, be kind, and amazing things will happen.